it seems to me that there is a lot of litigation involved in politics these days, like, um, for example, even pursuing Tom DeLay, what looks like a politically biased prosecution, and now they've decided to drop the charges after eight years, and it's cost him millions of dollars to fight all this on charges that they don't even want to pursue. And is, is hiding what they're doing perhaps a protective move? They don't want to lay all the lay everything out so people can go pick through it and find one of the things wrong and then pursue it. In well, terms of, of litigation against, I mean, your own situation. Well, I can tell you about that. I, I think we allow prosecutors to do about anything they want to do and they have no, there's no bottom line, there's no accountability to prosecutors. Prosecutors have immunity. They can go after you or me or anybody and they can come out on some outrageous charge. They never get sanctioned. Uh, nothing ever happens to them. I don't think there should be prosecutorial immunity. I've written about that on my website. Again, for you folks watching at home, it's uh, jimbrownusa.com is my website. If you go back four or five months uh, on my columns, I wrote about the fact that rogue prosecutors are allowed to do virtually anything they want. They can go on witch hunts. They can spend enormous sums of money. And uh, in case the, the, this Blagojevich, Blag 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 right? governor of Illinois, now look, yeah. he's a blowhard, he's an idiot, uh, he shouldn't be governor, he shouldn't be anything. But he shot his mouth off, well, they better make this worth my while. And, and look, if you put every politician in jail that shot their mouth off or inferred they're going to do things, you'd have to send them all to jail. I don't know what the governor of Illinois did, shot his mouth off a little bit, and so they spent, I'm told, $50 million, brought the whole pr uh, prosecutor system down on him, this grandstanding politician named Patrick Fitzgerald, and he comes out, first of all, when he indicts the guy and says, oh, Lincoln's rolling over in his grave, and, and, this is, and, and does things completely out of bounds. You're not supposed to say those kinds of things. You're supposed to go ahead and bring the indictment. Then after all this $50 million, they get him on one count of making a false statement. And his false statement was basically saying, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm innocent. So because you say you're innocent, they get you for making a false statement. Because basically he said he was innocent. That's, that, that was the, the gist of it all. And so the guy may have to go to jail. And again, he's not a very appealing character. But we're going to spend $50 million to go after a guy because he says he's innocent. You get him on no nothing else. I mean, that's a massive waste of money. No accountability for Fitzgerald. He can go in. That whole Liddy case, you recall the Liddy case, who uh, Liddy was the uh, lawyer for the vice president, for Vice President Cheney. And they hounded him and got him on one count of making a false statement. And many in the press seem to think he didn't make a false statement. He said what he thought. He might have been wrong. Libby. But because you make a mistake. What? Scooter Libby? Scooter Libby, right. Uh, yeah, so he ends up, uh, 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 President Bush goes ahead and commutes his sentence and so doesn't have to go to jail. He loses his law license, uh, stained by this same guy, Fitzgerald. I mean, where's the accountability? Uh, the worst prosecutor in the history of the federal, uh, 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 federal prosecutor system is a guy named Eddie Jordan down in New Orleans. Uh, the guy was just atrocious. Uh, he was finally run out of office, the elected DA down there, and he, they forced him to quit. And I, I mean, the stuff he did was just outrageous. That guy should lose his license to practice law and should be prosecuted himself. He should be prosecuted, but nothing ever happens to these rogue prosecutors, you see. And so, just like keeping the, the public officials in, in, in check and balance by going after the bad guys and sending them to jail, they need to do the same thing with the prosecutors. If they did that, the Tom DeLay situation would not come up, and you wouldn't have this massive waste of millions and millions of dollars going down dead-end streets like we found on both the federal level and the state level. And I can tell you, and by the way, uh, that's my, you know, I, I have a publishing company called the Lisbon Press. Uh, I published a number of books. The, this latest biography of Edwin Edwards is a book that I've published. It's sold almost 50,000 copies so far, the biggest selling book in the history of, of Louisiana authors. Uh, but we're putting together a future book now about prosecutorial misconduct, where prosecutors knew the guy was innocent. Now, there have been people put on death row and, and, and been killed in this country because prosecutors withheld the information. And that's, that doesn't happen once or twice. It happens time after time in the state of Louisiana, and we're going to document all this in a book coming out. It's hard to have a life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness when people are acting that way. Well, uh, we allow it because there, you got to have checks and balances in anything you do. You, you have checks and balances in school. I believe in accountability for school teachers. you got checks and balances in, in any public office, in the budget. 
but we don't. The, the, the one area that doesn't, I mean, the Supreme Court gets life, these federal judges, lifetime appointments, no checks and balances, do anything they want at their whim. They become arrogant. They only speak to God, and I'm not sure about several prosecutors in Louisiana if they even speak to God himself. And so uh, nobody should get a lifetime appointment. Why should someone get a job for life? Uh, and they're on the public dole. Uh, the judges in the Baton Rouge area, New Orleans area, many of them, uh, uh, don't show up for work. They take this senior status. They don't have to do anything. They get their full salary, and that's just wrong. That's not how the system should work. I think there should be some kind of a term on that. Anyway, it goes down to the system. There is no accountability on judges and prosecutors, and that's why the Tom DeLays get prosecuted for 10 years, and that's why we have the abuses we have in Louisiana today. When you started out, I don't believe there was even a, an interstate between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. How has, and, and now we, of course, have the Internet and the fast flow of information to every corner of the world. Has that changed your views on politics? Has it changed your views in the way you live your life? Or do you have core, core principles you, that have remained solid and steadfast through your life, and you're just adjusting the trap? Yeah, I don't think that, I think I've gone more back to basic core principles today. I, I was, uh, Neil Bork is a very popular talk show host, yes. libertarian. Reading, reading his life story last night about his philosophy, I think I've become more more hardcore in my core principles, you know, about a variety of issues that that have set this country off. You know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and, and I'll I'll throw a few out to you, and you're going to get sure. some nasty emails. But I mean, right who cares where they build that damn mosque in in New York City? It's several. If you've been to New York, two blocks could be two miles in Baton Rouge, and. and if I had to vote and I was on the city council, I'd say, no, I wouldn't vote to put the, the mosque. I wouldn't do that. But we're not going to have a, a huge Nash. $2 billion a year in Iraq that is being spent right now, $2 billion. Our schools are going to hell in the handbasket. Uh, we, we can't give pe people basic health care in this country. And we're going to take the whole national debate over a mosque in a city of New York City where there are 690,000 Muslims. We've got a huge Muslim community in Baton Rouge, and because a couple of goofballs on 9-11 did some horrible things and should be ex executed, we're going to blame a billion, 500 million Muslims in the world. It just don't make sense to me. You know, and, and I'm not a big fan of, of, of what a, a lot of goes on in the Middle East. I wouldn't vote for the mosque there. I want to be left alone and live my life, but don't bog me down in some ridiculous debate like that. This whole freedom of choice, I mean, I get irritated, I'm getting back to the core principles. Sure, absolutely. Man, freedom of choice. Uh, 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 I got the right to, 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 to wear my motorcycle helmet or not wear my motorcycle. I'm not going to wear a motorcycle helmet. You liberals are taking away my freedom of choice. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. You see, I don't care what you do with your life as long as you stay out of my face. You got me? Don't mess with me. When you don't wear a motorcycle, you're an 18-year-old kid and you don't wear, wear a motorcycle helmet, then you're going to be all but brain dead in that accident. And you know who's got to pay for you for the rest of your life? i got to pay for you. I got to. Now, if you want to have a million-dollar policy and say you will not take any public aid if you, if you uh, don't wear that helmet, fine, go ahead. But I don't want to pay one penny because you're so stupid that you won't wear a motorcycle. You follow me? I and I get the same thing as smoking. I don't care where you go smoke. But don't smoke around me or my kids. You follow me? I don't want you in my face. And I'm a very strong libertarian on a cross-section of these issues uh, that I think that the conservatives in this country are way overreacting to and the liberals in this country are way overreacting to. I think in Washington, D.C., you could put the Democrats and the Republicans in a sack and shake them up. When it comes to wasteful spending, it wouldn't matter who you pulled out. Right. They, they, all, they all vote the same. It was terrible under Bush and it's terrible under Obama. So I'm just trying in my core values to bring some common sense back into the debate. I do that in my radio show. I do that in columns I write. Sure. What kind of philosophy is that? I don't know. It's probably no. semi-conservative, uh, semi-libertarian, uh, semi-common, and mostly common sense. Mostly common sense. That's where I'm coming from this day and age. And I wish more legislators in Louisiana uh, and throughout this country would quit worrying about the next election and say, look, well, let's just try to bring a, a common sense basic to this debate. And that's what I'd like to urge more of.